Phil Lee. Very unlucky for Durham. This Lee competition take the last qualifying place for the Winter Olympics next year. Well, Britain opened their campaign against Poland yesterday. The commentators are Paul Ferguson and Barry Davis. Only four of that Great Britain squad didn't take part in the triumph in Eindhoven back in the spring, where Rick Ferrer and Kevin Conway, both incidentally from Division One clubs, were the joint top British scorers with 19 points apiece. The starting lineup has Bernie McCrone of Fife in goal, the Cardiff pair Cooper and Hope on defence, with Ferrer, Conway and Todd Bidner up front. Poland were rather caught cold in the opening match of the World Championships, which Great Britain went on to win by four goals to three. But they're a side with lots of experience, none more so than Henrik Grut, who's seeking to play in a fifth Olympic Games. He, of course, is in their starting lineup, as is Waldemir Klisiak, who was top scorer in the Eindhoven tournament with 24 points. There are the flags of the five competing nations in this qualifying tournament. There will only be one winner, Latvia, Slovakia, Japan, Poland and Great Britain. So much at stake, it's just everybody plays everyone else and the country at the top of the pile at the end of the tournament will go to Lillehammer. Britain already assured of playing in Group A in the World Championships, which come after the Olympic Games. And they'll be playing with the uh, the Russians and the Canadians and the Americans, etc., etc., Swedes and Finns. Top 12 teams in the world. That's where Britain have reached. Schubert. Adam Usch. Oh, that's an important interception. And they overplayed it then. Plachter really should have gone for the shot, surely. Haven't got it away yet. Good ducking, Plachter is over this side, he's not going to get it. Adam Wush doing all the digging. Another penalty coming up against Great Britain. Shapia was positioned right in front of the net. And they tried to do something a little too fancy as Michael Connor makes his way to the box. High sticking is the call. A chance for the Poles to get on the score sheet here just as the penalty is called and it didn't happen. Truti, catch, little touch from Federer was important. He should take this, decided not to in fact, I'm not quite sure why, didn't want to be drawn in. Playing a sort of diamond in front of McCrone, Tomasic waiting on the far post. And it's flicked in in fact on the near by catch and Poland have the lead. And at the last moment, just a touch. Zamoyski levels it from about 50 feet out. There's the touch. The touch into the back of the net. Macron going down as he has done for the first 12 minutes and 33 seconds of this period. And he's going to have to stay up. I think he's flopping a bit too much. Up off the pad of Bernie Macron has been the busier of the two net miners, that's for sure. Now a chance, Tony Han, but short-handed, and he can't make it count. Good stuff from Jaworski, but I have to say I've seen Tony Han play it better in that sort of situation. Didn't seem to me, Paul, to move the netminder at all. Shot it right at him, goaltender came out nicely. Big pass from way back, landed right on the red. Tony Han breaking it in, goal, Samoya, Samoyski rather, chasing, but the shot went into the midriff. The goaltender, where it should be, way out of the net, gradually backs into the net as the player comes in and he cuts down the angle. But the shot, not a good one. Han would like to have that one again. Out come Britain again. The pole's changing on the fly. Ferrer. And it was Terry Curtin back who couldn't get the shot away. Ferrer picks it up again. They turn away from the play. Shannon Hope would have had a chance of a pot shot straight on in. The poles were caught with everyone changing at the same time. This side of the ice, the right side, as the Brits go down it, was wide open and the Great Britain side couldn't capitalise. Still looking for the equaliser. John Ardell gets it across. Nobody closed in. 
and Mike O'Connor is a little wide and the catch in fact is quite comfortable for uh, Thomas Javorski, the younger of the two senior netminders, a couple of years younger than Batkiewicz. Well, from an ex-goalie, I would say O'Connor should have taken the shot to the, uh, the, the far side. He goes for the glove side here, fire it right at the other side. That's where all the action is. It's going to take a deflection. The goalie's going to be screened moving that way. He puts it onto a clear side right into his glove hand. Comes out Poland's way. <laughs> sure he didn't mean that. Jakub Szopinski. Nice stick handling. Good follow-up, and it's loose. Shot slightly surprised Jaworski. Britain certainly playing better in this middle period. Started it well, looking for the equaliser. It's on now! Tim Cranston seemed to play way over the top of the puck when it was sitting there asking to be dispatched. Bouncing, bobbling puck. And Cranston just couldn't control it. It comes in front. There's the back pass. Cranston looking for it, looking for it. Eventually, Groot says, thank you very much. It's out of here. Again. Action right in front of the goalie, uh, Jaworski, spreading himself across the goal, but Tim Cranston, number four, unable to get a good shot away. Britain out shooting Poland six to four. At the start of this second period, we played uh, seven minutes and 23 seconds now. 20 minutes of actual playing time. Patrick Scott. Into chase for Scott Morrison. Actually finished the top British goal scorer with 10, but he got most of those in the last game against China. I think seven of them when the uh, decision had already been reached. Oh, that's rather given away. Made it more complicated. Here's a chance for Poland, which would be against the run of the play. Good stuff. Good defending by Brian Mason from Slough Jets. Back come Britain again. They've really got the bit between their teeth in this period of playing much, much better hockey. Stephen Cooper plays it in. Conway's behind the net. This is Bidner. Hope back on the blue line. Conway, not quite sure. He was looking for a deflection. And no more. Klisiak comes out for Poland. Over the red line goes the man in uh, white and red. But then being met earlier on, on the red line, on the blue line, shot from Polovsky. That was a good shot, a quick release, and Bernie McCrohn had to be quick. Mitrovic <laughs> is watching his man. Bit casual around the back, loose in front again. Shannon Hope trying to get the angles right. It's flicked up, and it's loose. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! That really was a rather poor piece of refereeing. He thought the puck had been claimed by Yavolsky, but it hadn't. The puck was up in the air, and it came down and was put in. But the whistle had gone. Let's watch this again. Hope lets the shot go from the circle. It goes way upstairs. It's lost behind the goaltender. His hands are up before it crosses the red line. That should have been a goal. There's going to be a face-off in the Poland zone. Pera doing a great job of working back there. Back to Hope, who moves in, lets the shot go. It's high, not controlled by the goaltender. It's still free out there. Bidner doing a great job, too, of forechecking, giving the goalie a hard time. Well, in fairness to Seppo Michaela, Paulie might just have caught a high-stick challenge on the uh, on the goalkeeper, and uh, therefore dangerous play. But it seemed a little bit rough. Well, I think if he had called that, it would have been a face-off outside the blue line. It's just when he loses true. sight of the puck, he's got to blow that whistle. He thought it was frozen, and that's a decision they're going to have to live with. 9:32 of. The second period, Alex Dampier's side stood on the wrong end of the score. But 
whatever he said in the dressing room after the first period has brought a major improvement much better quality hockey and apart from uh, the carryover penalty keeping out of the box good shot good save shot was from Doug McEwen of Cardiff Oof. sticks were high up then and nobody made contact until the glove came down again we see Tim Cranston right in the thick of it the little guy has a lot of heart getting his stick way upstairs to try and tap it in that wouldn't have counted if he hit it from above his shoulders big shot from McEwen right at the blue goaltender again way out of his net to make the save action continued around the goal as it bobbled out front Worski goes down and Cranston is right there knocking on the door Tony Hand at the face-off. Patrick Scott to his right, Scott Morrison to his left. Lambert and Kellen back on the blue line. Comes out to Trutti. Kept in by Kelland. Neatly down. Nobody on this side. Got a battle for it a bit. Matrick got it out. Here's Shopinski. And he's got Garski moving in. Turned away across the face of his goal by Bernie McCone. It's allowed to run, and it runs kindly. Good catch. Shot was from Patrick Scott of Milton Keynes. He went for the sharp angle. Jaworski. I was a little surprised when his name came up as the starting goalter. Batkevich is the one who's been playing for the Polish team in previous World Cup championship games. But this guy has been pulling out all the stops. Good save from a sharp angle. This one was labeled. Watch it. Far corner. The Poles seem to have taken a back seat in this game. But still they lead by the only goal. Scored at 12.33 of the opening period by Catch, who is in possession now, and Tomasik is coming in as well. Good defensive work again. Terry Curtin back. Neatly done by Doug McEwen, the follow-up. Good save, they had two on one. Skating in on Javorski. It just needed a little bit more lift, and Javorski had to be beaten. Good goaltending. Again, it's Cranston. McEwen there. McEwen loves to put the puck upstairs. Cranston back to McEwen. He tries to get it over the pad, but he's too close in. The goaltender's right there with that pad. McEwen, who's a great fluid stick handler, skater, all at one with a body in the puck. Cranston gets it over. That goes upstairs, but not high enough. 13-6, we make the shots in the uh, second period in Britain's favour. And the first period was 7-6 in Poland's favour. Indication of how the matches turn round. But Britain still with nothing to show. Plakta. Do get the impression too that they need to get something from this good play. If the Poles were to break away and score one, it really would be a, a slap in the face. Here's Adamush, there's two on one here. Plakter again. Washed away by Mason. Haven't got it away yet, though. The man in front. Chopier, but he's not going to get it. Did well to recover his balance, Tony Hand, and Bidner, oh, and just squeezes past, and the penalty is going to be called against Poland. That was so close, and it would have been a pity for the Polish goalie who's played so well, because it wasn't that difficult a shot. Chudy goes into the penalty box as we take a look at this again. A big break here, not a difficult shot. The goaltender fans on it completely, and that scoots just wide of the post. Hope. There's plenty of that still. Patrick Scott can't quite take it. Yavorski just pushes it towards the blue line. Tony Hand in possession, he had the best chance for Great Britain, no doubt about that, at the end of the 
First period, shot from distance by Patrick Scott. Jaworski hangs on, face off to the left of his goal. That's the name of the game. Keep shooting the puck, something will happen. You never know when the puck is going to bounce kindly for you after you take a long shot. You never know when the goaltender is going to be unsighted. Just keep letting them fly when there's nothing else to do. Back to the Ferro line again with Todd Bidner and Kevin Conway. Andrew Marlowe back on defence with uh, Slough's Brian Mason. Marlowe. Bounces away, shot is wide. Bittner waits in front, but not for too long. Now look at somebody, Frank could save again. And the follow-up, and it's in! The equaliser has come at last, and Kevin Conway is the scorer. Just listen to the effect that that has had on the crowd in the Sheffield Arena. Watch this puck go in front of the goal. Jaborski makes the first save. He's down, can't get back up. Conway on the backhand shot. Finds a little daylight there and puts it home. Again, from behind the net. Great camera angle coming in here. The first save is there. We see a rebound come out, and Jaborski can't recover. Great Britain are on the scoreboard. Andrew Milo, that's going to run all the way through to Rick Ferrer. He's got Bidner in in front, who's wide, but an offside call anyway. Two-line pass was whistled down by the referee, Makla. The officials were letting it go. The referee came up and said, hey, I want this one to stop right here. Certainly getting uh, a player in on the net much more than in the middle period. That was a criticism that, that was justified then. Seconds ticking away, though. Well, here's a chance of a short-handed one. Duty, shots, did it come off the post? I don't know, but somehow McCrone kept it out. And again, off the crossbar. Unbelievable escapes for Great Britain. Makala, the referee, was right where he should be, right on the goal line, and he said, no goal. Shapinski was in there. They were hammering shots from all angles. Let's look at this again. Some good stuff from the poles. Shapinski, with Bernie McCrone going down, just can't get the lumber on it big shot coming in from to catch he scored the first goal a lot of people thought that was number two for him watch this again you decide did that go inside under the crossbar it certainly landed outside the red line and the referee was perfectly positioned Groot Shapovsky Good skating by him. Tisiak. Well, this possessed briefly, or at least forced to go wide. It didn't actually get the puck, but here's Groot. Kicked out straight in front, bang straight away, and here's a chance for Bidner. Picking it up on the red line, Bidner. Needs support, has got support from Kevin Conway, but it didn't arrive at Ferro, it arrived instead at Javorski. Ferro was standing all alone on the far post, calling for it. Bidner just couldn't spin around to get it over to him. Marlow checks his man on the opposition blue line. In goes the puck again. Conway goes off in chase. Lambert tries to hold it in and succeeds by sheer determination. Conway needs somebody out in front. Conway having the battle. Lambert again makes it his. Good stuff for Lambert. Ferrer, just as he was going to shoot, somebody was hanging onto the stick. And out come Poland. The pace picks up again. Blocked by Bernie McCrone. Fisiak says, that's enough for me, I need a rest, and away he goes. Take it away, says McCrone. Round the back goes Andre Mahler to uh, Terry Curtin back on the far side. Tim Cranston down the middle, good play by Doug McEwen. Then it had to come a little wide. Cranston round the back. Curtin back in front. And a good stop again by Jaworski. Jaworski comes up big yet again. Curtin back was cruising right on the edge of the crease. Action all around the Polish goaltender. It's tied at one. And there are 
eight minutes. Just a bit under nine minutes left. This is Matt Jack. It's not away. Still not away. It's still not away. Cooper got a bit of a bash in the mouth from Matt Jack. Collected by Frasco. Still not out of there. Frasco and Matchak in the crease is forced away. It's loose in front and it's lifted up and it's in. And Poland have the lead. Every man congratulates the other. And it looked like Tomaszek who lifted it up in the end. Finally, a backhander for number nine, Miroslav Tomaszek puts the Poles back into the lead. The Poles really did come out flying on this shift. They were skating rings round the Brits out there, and there's the goal eventually going upstairs. And Scott and Morrison is the line. That's nice, this is Scott, this is Tony Hahn, this is Scott, and that's the goal. It's tied again at two. Lovely goal. Good example of making the puck do the work there. And so clever to feed it back to Worski, way out of the net. He had to commit himself, he had to go somewhere. Gooch going back, he goes for the man Scott on the far side. He's taken out of the play. The net is wide open, and there is number two for Great Britain. Seventeen forty on the clock. We're inside the well inside the last three minutes. GB is the cry, and away comes Plakta. Adamush round the back of the British net. Haven't got it away yet. Oh, it's loose in front. Didn't have it. McCrone for a moment, then another shot is wide from Plakta. Adamush. Zamoyski waiting on the blue line. Britain cannot get it out of their end. They've got to get it out of their end. They do get it out of their end. And here comes a break by Conway. Bidner wants the puck. Conway's got his hands full, trying to get it past the man in attention, who is Trutti. Stephen Cooper. Minute and a half left. Now. Is there to be a decision? Oh, are we going to start this qualifying tournament with a tied game? Britain have had more of the chances after the poll started, the better. Stephen Cooper. Doesn't quite make it. Matchstack. Forced to turn back. Good forechecking, good positioning. And we're down into the last ten seconds. Five seconds. And the whistle has gone with two seconds remaining. Still possible, Barry. Anything can happen from a face-off. It takes, well, I'd say it takes about a second to score from the face-off. These guys can shoot it direct. They're all set for the last face-off of the match. Great Britain have had 39 shots for their two goals. 23 for the Poles for their two goals. And that's where the match ends. It's tied at two. Both countries have a point. Both countries still very much in contention for the one qualifying place allowed. It could all hang in the end on the last game next weekend. Good stuff from Great Britain. And Britain now face matches against Japan and Latvia this week. But we'll have highlights of their final match, and it could be crucial, as Barry says. That's against Slovakia, and it'll be...